So Anthony Joshua put on a masterclass performance to get his revenge on Andy Ruiz this weekend, making me look stupid for picking against him. The main point we can learn from this performance is how to shut down a shorter, more powerful opponent with the use of the lead hand. So let's take a look at the various ways Joshua utilized his lead hand, which we could utilize in our own boxing. So the first and most basic use of the lead hand is as a measuring tool. If you have a reach advantage over your opponent, then you could extend your arm to check if you're in punching range. If your fully extended arm doesn't reach your opponent, then it goes without saying that your opponent is even further from their punching range and cannot reach you. Notice how Joshua effortlessly just sticks his lead hand out as he steps to the left, just to check the distance. He extends his lead hand from his hip and brings it back to his hip, knowing he is well out of Andy Ruiz's range and cannot get hit unless Ruiz lunges at him, which he could easily react to encounter. So now that Joshua has established his range, he knows that if Ruiz gets any closer, he could jab him and still remain outside of Ruiz's range since he has the reach advantage. And that's what we see here. We see him land the jab, times it as soon as Ruiz steps in to his range. And there we see his defensive responsibility. He steps away after he lands the shot and extends his arm to recheck the distance, make sure he's safe again. So once again, we see the same thing. Joshua is going to step over. We see him check the distance. And so you see him extends his lead hand to measure the distance. So Joshua sees that Ruiz is just outside of his reach and can be jabbed if Ruiz moves any closer than he is now. And then we see him shoot the jab as soon as Ruiz steps in. So once again, Joshua establishes the distance. Then we see Ruiz step into that distance and then Joshua pops him with the jab. And here's yet another example of Joshua using his lead hand to measure the distance and timing Ruiz as he steps in with the jab. So once again, we see Joshua extend his lead hand to establish the range. And then we're gonna see Andy Ruiz take a step in to that range. And then we see Joshua perfectly time that step in with a jab and then he simply steps back out of range to avoid any kind of counter. And one more time we see another example of Joshua doing this again, but I think you guys get the point. So just to hammer the point, in distance is always your first line of defense. As the fighter with a longer reach, you can completely shut your opponent down if you constantly keep them out of their range. By using your lead hand to measure the distance, you'll always know if you're in punching range or not. Now this may just look like a big right hand that scored for Joshua, but the right hand was first set up by Joshua's probing lead hand. A probe is useful for finding openings in your opponent's defense, which is what happened here. By extending your lead hand at your opponent, it allows you to observe how they respond to it, and you could counter that response the next time you show your lead hand. So let's watch this again. So we see Joshua probes with his lead hand and notices that Ruiz responds by parrying with his left hand. This is a fundamental error by Ruiz because we're taught to parry from the hand on the same side so that you don't leave yourself open for your opponent's other hand. And we're going to see how Joshua is actually going to exploit this. So he's going to do it again. Watch this. So Joshua uses this information to set up a right hand on the opening. By showing his lead hand again, Joshua gets Ruiz to parry with his left hand again, exposing his left side for Joshua's right hand. And there's the right hand on the opening, but I want you to see the beautiful execution of this setup. Notice how when Joshua shows the lead hand, he doesn't even fully extend it. This is not a 1-2 combination. The lead hand isn't meant to land on Ruiz. As a matter of fact, you even notice that his lead hand doesn't even make contact with Ruiz's glove. Because many fighters are used to catching, then countering, Joshua shows the lead hand and pulls it away, essentially making Ruiz reach for it with the wrong hand, 
to not only delay a counter, but it also makes the opening for his right hand even wider. So Joshua was able to plan this just from probing with his lead hand just seconds earlier. So we're gonna see a similar setup for the same situation again. You see him in the very next round, shoots the jab, and he's gonna try it again. So this time, Joshua shoots the jab to Ruiz's left glove to make Ruiz respond with his left hand again. Even if Ruiz learned his lesson from last time, this slight change in Joshua's setup gets Ruiz to make the same mistake, just with a larger bait. And the slight movement with Ruiz's left hand is just enough to allow an opening for Joshua's right hand, which he lands perfectly again. And I just want to add that Joshua probably caught on to the fact that Ruiz using his left hand instead of his right hand to parry left jabs is a bad habit that he probably won't break instantly. Joshua knows Ruiz is too smart to simply fall for the same trick in the very next round, but he knows he could land the same setup again if he just baits Ruiz harder. Ruiz won't reach for Joshua's jab as soon as he sees it again, so Joshua instead jabs at Ruiz's left glove to trigger Ruiz's bad habit just enough to open up a window for the right hand. This is a great display of my favorite aspect of boxing, which is strategy. So here once again Joshua probing Ruiz, he probes and he sees Ruiz reaches with his left hand, probes again and sees he reaches with his right hand, he probes and sees that he reaches with both hands so he knows that he could just pop Ruiz with the jab because he knows that Ruiz is going to reach for the jab. And here's another situation where Joshua is probing at Ruiz and he catches on the fact that Ruiz is parrying with the wrong hand so he catches him on the opening with the jab. And here's yet another situation where Joshua is probing at Ruiz to see what he's going to do. And as soon as Ruiz reaches for this probe and gives up an opening, Joshua shoots the right hand on the opening. In all of these situations, Joshua was able to find an opening to land a shot because he probed Ruiz's defense with his lead hand. Probing is essential for improving your offense because it could give you information to outsmart your opponent and win the fight. And so I wanted to close this out by emphasizing the fact that distance control is not solely done with the lead hand. Since distance is the key word here, Joshua's movement in conjunction with his lead hand control was the formula to keeping Ruiz out of range for essentially the whole fight. Not only does Ruiz have to get into his punching range safely, but he also has to get his feet set in order to throw a meaningful punch or a combination. And this is what led to him stopping Joshua in the first fight. In the first fight, Joshua would stand and trade with the faster, more powerful Ruiz when he has a huge height and reach advantage. So Joshua adjusted in the rematch by moving laterally and re-establishing distance every time Ruiz got set, forcing him to reset. So Joshua was wise not to risk getting into a firefight with Ruiz. Instead of going toe to toe with him and having a dick measuring contest with Ruiz whenever he got cornered, Joshua smartly reset the situation by clinching. Height and reach are considered advantages in boxing for a reason, and if you ever have to prepare to box someone shorter than you, you need to look no further than this near shutout masterclass from Anthony Joshua. The crowd might not have liked this fight, but watching it got me so hyped I had to make this film study. Then I jacked off and went to sleep. You know, if you're still watching this, then you probably liked what you saw. Well, you know what? I didn't like what I saw. I promised I'd be experimenting with new styles now that I just got some proper video editing software. But you know, my dumb self can't figure out how to use it for the life of me. If any of you are experts at using Adobe Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects, then you're welcome to come over to my house and show me how to use it because I just can't figure it out to save my life. I'll I'll buy you a plane ticket or a train ticket to get over here. I'll, I'll give you my laptop and just somebody show me how to do it. Anyway, that's going to be the real end of the video. Peace.